All right, in this video, we are going to talk about the edge chromatic number of complete graphs of even order. Uh, so the first thing that uh, we want to talk about is if you delete a vertex uh, off of a complete graph, uh, then the subgraph you get from that is a complete, also a complete graph. So if V is a vertex of the K sub N, the complete graph on N vertices, where n is bigger than 1, then k sub n minus v is isomorphic to k sub n minus 1. So um, remember a complete graph, right? Every vertice, every vertex is adjacent to every other vertice, right? So if you delete the vertex and all those edges, um, you know, from let's say the vertex is V. So you delete V, the vertex V, and then delete all the edges uh, adjacent to V, then that leaves you with N minus one vertices, right? And they are still, um, if you pick any other vertex, right, of K sub N, it's still adjacent to every other vertex that's left in K sub N minus V. So it, it is a complete graph again, okay? Um, so, so we're going to use that fact and need that fact in um, one of the upcoming proofs. All right, so before we get started on the formal proof of this, then uh, let's take a look at an example and just try to uh, give a proper edge coloring of K6. Okay, so um, we are going to use these five colors C0, C1, C2, C3, and C4, right? And so I just picked these colors to uh, these specific colors here. All right, and then the vertex set of K6, we're going to assume that that is 0 through 5, okay? And so what we're going to do is delete this vertex uh, 5 right here. So we know, right, from the previous result is that K6 minus that vertex 5 is isomorphic to K5, right, the complete graph on five vertices. And we have, in a previous video, right, already proven that the edge chromatic number of K, uh, the complete graph on N vertices, if N is odd, is equal to N. Okay, so K5 has uh, an edge coloring, a proper edge coloring using five colors, so we are going to use these five colors and color that, all right? So I sort of have a picture of uh, what that might look like. Again, ignore the A's there. Uh, the A's just make it easier for me to uh, draw the graph, which uh, it takes a lot of uh, uh, work on these gra uh, to sketch these graphs out so nice. Um, so, um, so here is uh, K6, right? And I've deleted... Uh, the vertex five right here, and then I just made the uh, the edges white, so they're not just you know assume that those are not not there. Okay. All right, and so uh, we would color uh, that the edge coloring that we talked about in the previous video, the one for the uh, complete graphs of odd order with an odd number of vertices, and that's that same coloring that we talked about where we would. Um, add the vert vertices together, right? So so uh, zero plus one, right, would come out to be one. And then if it's bigger than bigger than our five or larger, then we find the remainder when divided by five. So the the edge A zero A one is colored color one, which is red. Right? And then say like A two to A four Right, two plus four is six, and the remainder when you divide six by five is one, right? And so we would color that one red as well, right? So that's that same coloring that we talked about in the previous video, okay? So that's the first step, All right? And then what we would do to finish off the coloring, right, the thing to notice is that, say, vertex zero is missing one of the five colors, right? It has red, blue, green, 
and yellow, but it doesn't have a black edge coming into it. So I'm going to color this one black like that. All right, and then uh, look at vertex one. Uh, we can see it only has four colors in there, right? And it's missing one of the colors. It's missing the blue color. So we are going to color that edge blue. All right, and you can see we won't have any problems. It's still a proper edge coloring so far, right? Because uh, there are not two um, adjacent edges uh, colored the same color. All right, and then for vertex two, it is missing the yellow color, right? So we would color that one yellow. So it's still uh, proper edge coloring so far. Uh, then this is uh, vertex three is missing the red edge. So we would color this edge from a uh, from three to five red. And then finally, the vertex four is missing the green. Edge. So we would color uh, the edge from four to five green. All right, and so you can see that that is a proper edge coloring of K6. So what we're going to do is just extend that uh, process to uh, the general case. And that's how our proof is going to go. All right. Uh, so we've proved that proven that the edge chromatic number of K6 is five, right? It has to be uh, at least five, right? Because um, that's the max degree. So the edge chromatic number has to be greater than or equal to the max degree. So that proves, right? Uh, we've exhibited a coloring using five colors. So that proves that the edge chromatic number of K6 is five. All right. Uh, so uh, the part about the missing colors, uh, how, how are we going to formalize that a little bit? Um, if we go back and look at our colorings, right, vertex zero is missing the color zero, which was black. And then vertex one is missing the color two, right, which was um, the blue one. Right? If we go back and look right here, right, um, that was the color two was blue. Uh, let's see. I must have not have followed that. Uh, let's see. No, that looks all right. Yeah, yeah. First, uh, it's here where there's a mistake. Yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah, vertex one is missing color two. Okay, uh, vertex two, right, is missing color four. I'm just double checking that. Color four was um, color four was yellow. And let me just instead of having to jump back and forth, let me just pull this off over here. All right, there's our list of colors, right? Uh, so vertex two is missing color four, which is yellow. Uh, vertex three is missing color one, which was red. And vertex four is missing color three, which was the green, okay? All right, so, uh, so the pattern there, right, is that uh, if you look, if I times the vertex number by, by two, right, this is going up by twos until we get to here. Um, so so it goes up zero, two, four, and then here, if I go up by two, I get six and eight, right? But those are bigger, right, than uh, five. So if we take the remainder when we divide that by five, the remainder when six is divided by five is one, 
and the remainder when eight is divided by five is three, right? And so you can see that there's that pattern right there. There's the one and there's the three, okay? So the color that this, um, the edge from vertex five to the other vertices, right? Or what you would do is take the other vertex and multiply it by two. And then take mod five and that will tell you what color right that you need to color the uh, edge when you do that okay so that's the pattern there all right so uh, here it is listed out right uh, in table form i had forgotten i had written this out in the table uh, so again, take the uh, the vertex number, times it by two, and then take uh, the remainder when you divide by five, the unique remainder, right, guaranteed by the division algorithm, and then pick that color and, and color it that color. All right, so that will tell us exactly, you know, what color to pick. Okay, and so uh, just to, to talk about how this would go, Right, um, um, in a formal proof without kind of looking at the graph, when we were actually doing the coloring, we could see, okay, yeah, it works, right, because we could just observe these colors. But in the formal proof, right, then we need to make some kind of argument about as to why that would work, right? And so the claim is, is if um, vertex I, right, is not incident to an edge colored this color when I times by two and take the remainder when I divide by five, okay? So to see that that is true and, and then that will work, uh, if I have vertex I and it's incident to some edge that is colored the same color, right? Then what that says is that the coloring of that edge that I used uh, from coloring, uh, K6 minus the vertex five. That was the coloring that we talked about in the previous video, right? About edge colorings for odd, uh, for complete graphs of odd order. What we did back then was we um, added the edges together and then divided by it. This should, see, this should be mod five right here. Hopefully I fixed it in there. Nope, I did not. So this is mod five. I forgot to change this. So just pretend this is a five. Uh, in there. So, so this is um, so this is the coloring that it receives from coloring uh, K six minus the the vertex five. All right, and so uh, that would mean that this edge, right, the edge going from five to vertex I, we're coloring this color right here two I mod five. Okay, so if the, those two would be equal, if if this wasn't a proper edge coloring, okay? And so you can write two times i as i plus i, and then we would do the cancellation, right, of, uh, of addition modulo five. Uh, finally, I changed it to five right here. So I could cancel this i and this i right here, and I get j mod five is equal to i mod five. Well, j and i are um, the remainders since since we pick the vertex numbers to go from zero to five, right? Then these, um, uh, then these would be um, the remainder when I divide by five on each of these would just be J and I, right? J is somewhere between uh, zero and four and I is somewhere in between zero and four. So if they're equal when I take the remainder, well, since they're in that range, they have to be equal to each other, okay? And so, um, so that, that is a contradiction, right? Um, if vertex I is incident to edge IJ, right, that is colored this color, well, um, then, then that implies that I and J are equal. So you can't have an edge going from I to I, right? Um, so, so that can't happen. So this proves, right, that um, that we are able to do that, right? That we are able to say um, 
for this vertex that we removed initially that um, over here, right, the vertex zero is missing color zero. And then the vertex next one is going to be missing color two and color four and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, without just here, and you know, when we were going through the example, we just looked at it, but this is uh, more of a formal argument about, about um, proving that fact. Okay. And so again, we're using that cancellation of addition in this modular arithmetic. All right. So uh, we need one more thing for the uh, proof of the uh, fact that the edge chromatic number of uh, the complete graph on an even number of vertices is equal to uh, n minus 1. And that is this cancellation law for multiplication modulo n or mod n, however you want to say it. Uh, this fact is a little, this one's a little bit more complicated than the one for addition. Uh, the one for addition we went through and proved. Uh, we're just going to state this one. Uh, otherwise, we'll start getting into a big uh, uh, stuff that you'll cover in number theory if you haven't had that, or you may have already seen this, right? Uh, so this is very similar to the addition one, but there's one big uh, thing that you need here, and that's that you need a and n to be relatively prime here. So here I have a times b mod n is equal to a times c mod n, and what I want to do is cancel that a, basically, right, from both sides. Well, you can't always do that. Um, not, you know, for regular arithmetic, you know, it's not a big deal, but for this modular uh, uh, multiplication, it's not going to work unless A and N are relatively prime, okay? Uh, so what does relatively prime mean? It means that their greatest common divisor is equal to 1, okay? Uh, so if A and N, if the greatest common divisor is equal to 1, then you can cancel it out and conclude that B is equal to C mod N. Okay. All right, so we will need that in, in the proof of uh, this next fact. All right, so at this point, we, I think, are ready to prove um, the fact that the chromatic number of k sub n is n minus 1 if n is even. All right, and so um, we would start off, right, saying that the, the maximum degree of k sub n is n minus 1. So that tells you that the edge chromatic number of k sub n, right, is greater than or equal to n minus 1. And here, right, we're assuming that n is an even number, or even integer. All right, so what we need to do then is to show that k sub n can be colored using exactly n minus 1 colors. So we're going to do that same trick that we talked about. We're going to label the vertices of k sub n as 0 through n minus 1. And we're going to choose n distinct colors, c0 through cn minus 1. And what we're going to do is remove the vertex with the highest index, that's n minus 1, Right, so we are going to remove that off. And k sub n minus that vertex, minus n minus 1, is a complete graph on n minus 1 vertices, right? Um, and it's odd. It has n minus 1 vertices, right? Because, and that's an odd number, right? Because remember, and we're assuming that n is even here. All right, and so by the, pre the fact that we proved in the previous um, video, we can c give a proper edge coloring to k sub n minus n minus 1 using these uh, n colors, right? Okay. All right, so we, and we would do that exactly, the, you know, the same way that we did in the uh, previous video. Okay, so next up, right, is we've colored all of those edges, but we haven't colored any of the edges that look like this. The edges that go from n minus 1 to i, where i is in between 0 and n minus 2, right, the one before n minus i. And so we're going to do exactly like we did. We are going to give those the color c 
sub 2 sub i mod n minus 1, just like we did before. All right, and then we have a couple of things to prove about that. Number one, right, that that's a vertex i is not incident to an edge with that color. So that's not going to mess up our proper edge coloring. Right? And that proof is exactly uh, what we ran through before. If I have vertex i and it's incident to edge ij that is colored this color, right, then this coloring, right, uh, or the coloring that we used before, I didn't actually didn't write it down here, but the coloring we used on k sub n minus n minus 1 is this coloring right here, right? We color the edges i plus j, the edge ij, the color i plus j mod n minus 1. And then we colored um, this edge, right? The edges that are coming from um, vertex n minus 1, we colored those 2 sub i mod n minus 1, where i was the other vertex in the edge. All right, and so then we can uh, write that out like so. And then use the cancellation property for um, addition and mod arithmetic. And because i and j are numbers from 0 to n minus 2, then they have to be equal to each other. All right, and that is a contradiction because of the fact that uh, this um, wouldn't give you a correct uh, edge there. I and J can't be equal to each other, right? Because there's no edges like that. All right, and so that is almost there. The thing is, is that, uh, so we know that when we color these edges, the edges that go from zero to N minus one, right? Or one to N, I to N minus one, we know that um, that doesn't mess up the existing edges that are colored. We still have a proper edge coloring. Uh, the thing is, is um, how about at the vertex n minus 1, right? Maybe um, when we use this coloring, maybe it's possible that um, that two of the vertices or two of the edges that come into vertex n minus 1 are colored the same color, right? We, we kind of need to argue that they're different, right? So if I have two edges, right, that come into n minus 1, so here's an edge from i to n minus 1, right, and here's an edge from j to n minus 1, and suppose that they're colored the same color, okay? Uh, if that's so, right, then what we get is that 2i mod n minus 1 is equal to 2j mod n minus 1. Right, those two colors would would have those two numbers would have to be the same, right? And that would give us the same color. And so you can see right here, um, really what we want to do is is get rid of this two right here and cancel that out. Uh, so we we're going to use that cancellation uh, theorem for multiplication. The only thing is is that there was an extra condition in there, right? That the number that you wanted to cancel and the mod had to be relatively prime. Okay, so just uh, remember, right, we are using, um, we are assuming that n is an even integer, so that means n minus 1 is odd. So it is true, right, that 2 and n minus 1 are relatively prime. Their greatest common divisor is going to be 1, right, because an odd number is not divisible by 2. So, um, so the greatest common divisor is going to be 1 in this case. And so what that means is that we can cancel the two out there. So we get i mod n minus 1 is equal to j mod n minus 1. So again, i and j are numbers from 0 to n minus 2, right? Which, are that, which means that we can conclude that i would be equal to j. So the only way you can't have two edges, right? If two edges are the same color, then they have to be the same edge in this case. And that's coming into n minus 1. Okay, so before previously we could just inspect the coloring that we that we got from K6, but here you know it's not entirely obvious that that it's a proper edge coloring, right? Uh, when when you're talking about the the general proof. Okay. All right, and so I think that's it for this video. Uh, I'm gonna 
put a couple of facts that you need to know to do the homework in the next um, video.